Welcome everybody, my name is Randy and you're watching my channel Randy the Brand. Today I have a very quick video for you. We're going to explore the Node library called Puppeteer. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that you can do with it, but today in particular we're just going to be exploring the screenshot generation. But if you want to check out the library, you can go to mpmjs.com slash packages Puppeteer and I will also link this in the description below. And you can just explore some of the options and some of the things that you can do, such as uh, crawl a single page application to generate pre-rendered content. You can do automated form submissions, UI testing, keyboard input, and so on. There is a lot that you can do. Just visit this page and have a look. Anyways, now let's get started by creating a project and I have already created a folder called node-puppeteer in here. So let's initialize our project and I'm going to do this with PowerShell because I am on Windows, but of course if you're Mac use a terminal or Linux. So let's do npm init and this will initialize a new project for us and we need to give our project a package name and I'm just going to call mine node dash puppeteer just like this and for the rest of the questions I'm just going to press enter a bunch of times and press ok and this should create the package.json file for our project in here. Let's open this folder in Visual Studio Code for me uh, but of course feel free to use whatever editor you're most comfortable with it doesn't really matter so this is Visual Studio Code and let's open packages, uh, package.json. So inside here, as you can see, we have a very small JSON file, but we need to add node one so we don't have to restart the server every time we make a change. And also we need to install Puppeteer. Let's get started by installing node one. And to do this, we're going to go to PowerShell again Let's clear this and let's do npm install dash dash save dash dev and then node one just like this and once we're done let's now install the property as well so npm install property just like this press enter and this should take a few seconds to install. Okay, now that we have property install, installed, we can go back to the package.json file. And as you can see, we have the dev dependencies here in Nodemon, and we have the property dependency installed, which is great. And now if you wanted to start a project with Nodemon, we can just do under scripts, start, column, and then Nodemon, and then we need to provide the name of our application file. So for me, I, I always call mine app.js and then come up. Now, when we run this, uh, this should run the app.js file, which we haven't yet created. So let's create that. New file, app.js. Uh, this is where our app will be created and so on. Save this and let's go back to the PowerShell and let's make sure that everything is working by running our project. So we can do npm start and hopefully we should see that the application is now starting with node uh, app.js and everything is working well. So for this application, we're not going to be using express or anything like that. So we're going to be seeing all the output in the console and we are also going to be creating screenshot files in our project folder. So let's move this to the right side and move this to the left side. And maybe we can make this a little bit smaller. Of course, I could open the terminal in Visual Studio Code, but I don't really like it that much. I like having a separate terminal just because it's a little bit better to see it. Let's start by building our project. Now, the first thing that we need to do is require Puppeteer. And to do this, we can do const uh, Puppeteer. Puppeteer equals require. And then we can require Puppeteer. Just like this. 
then we need to do an async function. And to do this, we can do async to the function just like this. We need to run it. Okay. Now everything for our application will be living in this async function. And let's get started with the first thing. And the first thing that we need to do is uh, launch the Chromium browser. So we can take, so we can open the URL and take the screenshot. So to do this is actually, so to do this is actually fairly simple. We can do const browser and then we can do await puppet here, launch just like this. And we could actually open the Chromium browser headless, which I will show you in a second, but I'm just going to leave it like this. Uh, as default, the headless is turned to uh, true. So I'm going to leave it like this. And then we need, now we basically need to create a new page. And to do this, we need, we can do const page equals, equals await browser and then browser dot new page, just like this. And now we need to provide the URL for the page that we need to open. To do this, we can do await page dot go to, and then we need to pass the URL of the page that we need to open. And for this example, I'm just going to use my blog. So we can do HTTP slash column slash slash ready dot code UK. Should we close this? And now we can actually take the screenshot and save it into our local folder. And to do this, we can do, we can do await page dot screenshot. Um, and then inside here, we need to provide an object of the path and also the name of the file. And let's do this path. And then we can just use the current directory. So I'm just going to do, uh, so I'm just going to give the screenshot a name in this case. So let's call it a screenshot dot PNG. And we actually should be good to go here. And the last thing that we need to do is close the browser. And to do this, we can do await browser dot close, just like this. And this should close the browser for us. Now, if I was to save this because we're using Nodemon, you should be able to see that our app just restarted and here on the left side, you might have noticed that we have a new file called screenshot.png. And if I was to click this in Visual Studio Code, you will see that we are getting an image. And I believe that the default value for the screenshot is 800 pixels by 600 pixels. As you can see, I think it's roughly around there. And this is the screenshot of my live website. Now there is a lot of stuff that you can do. And let me first of all, start from the top. Now, the first thing that I wanted to show you is that we can actually set custom uh, width and height for the screenshot. And to do this, it's actually fairly easy. We can set a page viewport. So let's do page.viewport set viewport, excuse me. And inside here, we need to pass an object which will take width. And let's put the width of 1300, something like this. And let's add the height as well. And let's add the height to be something like, I don't know, 2000. And we can also pass the uh, device scale factor uh, as the food, I believe this could be one, but we can experiment with this. In fact, let's experiment with this as well. So let's do device scale factor and let's set this to one and see what happens. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and let's make this a little bit smaller as well. And let's say now currently at the moment, because we just reset the server, uh, you didn't see you might have expected that there will be another file, but no, this currently actually just replaces the current screenshot file, but we can solve this in a second. So let me open this now. And as you can see, the screenshot is much larger now. Um, so if I can zoom in here, which is, oh, I can actually zoom in. So this is awesome. As you can see, the height is 2000 pixels now, and the width I set to be uh, 1300 pixels so you can change the width to whatever you like and i believe that there is also device options so device um so you can set different device 
names like iPhone and it will do the iPhone screen size. But okay, it's not in here. Um, okay, it's not on here, but you can do that. Um, okay, it's not on here, but you can do that and you can do all sorts of uh, other stuff. But the last thing that I wanted to show you is how we can actually generate other screenshots because currently we're literally overwriting the screenshot.png. Let's make sure that every time we run our script, it actually creates a new screenshot. And to do this, I'm going to cheat here a little bit and I'm just going to do this with the slanted uh, single brackets like this. And I'm just going to add the date now to create a unique file name. So what we can do is date dot now like this and hopefully if i save this this should just do the screenshot with the date now obviously this is not formatted well but at least it gives us a unique file name and as you can see we have a new file if i was to reset this again hopefully we should get another file now yep we are getting another file and let's say we resize this to be something like for mobile or whatever, like let's say 400 pixels and we can leave the height. Let's save this. And as you can see, we have a new file here. And if I open it, you can see that this is like uh, a mobile website and so on. And of course you can do all sorts of stuff. Maybe you can set this to take screenshots every hour of your uh, website or whatever. You can, actually, you can actually tell it to do specific coordinates, which is pretty awesome and a really good idea for this could be to develop like a heat map of a website um, and so on. Well, I know this is a little bit short and very easy to do, but I hope that you found it useful. And uh, this is everything for this video tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful. I know it was a quick one, but um, if you did find it useful, make sure you subscribe by hitting the red button below. And last but not least, don't be afraid to say hello in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video.